if Chris builds Kevin and Britt stuff, I want him working on my stuff too. Which well. is what we told him to do in the beginning, but yeah. for some reason he called me and said, wow, oh, we already did it because I thought you were busy. Yeah. yeah, enough said. So stick around, see what happens. It should be fun. You guys may have noticed the red tubes sticking out from underneath the door in our last video. That brings me to our next mod, which is onboard air. There's a lot of different ways you can do the onboard air thing. We've had three at one point in time on our rig. This is what we have found to work the best. We've used the CO2 tanks. We've used that before, but you know, to be honest, they take up a lot of room. And this, this doesn't. It fits nicely underneath the seat and you're able to plug in the hose on either side. Without any issues, you can just store the hose underneath the seat in the back like we do, and then you have onboard air. So it's been really convenient. We use it pretty much every time we go off-road. The next mod that we have on the outside of our truck, starting to get into some of the fun stuff I know that you guys have been really wanting to know, is the rock slide engineering side steps. Now, the last build that we did with Wild Heart, we didn't have the steps that come down, the powered steps. We ended up going with the powered steps this time because it's just nice and convenient. I'm short. I wanted to try something a little bit different. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the side steps that we had on Wild Heart. We just wanted to try the rock slide engineering and I'm really happy we did. They're really nice, they're convenient. The only thing that I do have to add about them, if you are planning on taking them off road at all, get the extra added protection for it. I say this because if you end up hitting them on anything while you're out on the trail, um, it is completely covered as long as it has that piece Extra armor. on it. You need the body armor on it. One of the reasons we went with rock slide engineering is because you can turn off the steps when you were out on the trail. So like when we were doing the Rubicon, um, we were able to turn them off and not have to worry about them opening up onto a rock. If you are in a difficult position and you need to, uh, you don't have to worry about them hitting things when you don't want them to. Okay, I'm gonna take over with mods for a little bit as uh, Crystal wanted to film some of this. But one of the next mods we did, and it's actually not really a mod, but we took this antenna over from Wild Heart. I love the way the little bullet antenna looks on the Gladiator. It does wiggle like this when you drive, but I like the way it looks cosmetically versus this, the big giant factory antenna. That's just silly looking. Is These are actually brand new. This is from DC Designs, and they are blinkers and side camp lights. So we use these lights for camp setup. We have them hooked up inside on the aux beam light controller. We're able to independently turn them on and off. And they're nice because they light up all on the side of the Gladiator for when we're like, when you get into camp late and then you're trying to set up, or if you're just driving down the back road and you just need side lights so you can see wildlife and stuff like that. So they light up the road perfectly. They come colored matched perfectly to your truck. So you just let them know what color you have they paint them and they send them and that's it. They're perfect. Do you want me to do it? Maybe that'll be more effective. <laughs> <laughs> On Wild Heart, we had the Road Armor fenders and as they were really good fenders and really easy to install and they look pretty cool, the downside was they were really heavy. So when you add your four of those to the build, you definitely knew they were there. We decided to go with the Fender Chop Kit, our good friend Chris over at Lightbright helped me take it apart and make it look like this. And um, I love the look, the way it all looks together. Matching the fender, we went with Quake LED. This is the LED made for Rubicon. And it's actually a RGB LED, turn signal blinker, camp setup light, etc. You have like a little remote, you can control them. You do have to drill a little hole in the fender to get it to mount. But um, I think it looks super, super slick. Let's talk about front bumpers. This is probably the hardest decision that we've ever done in our Jeep. We decided not to move over the road armor bumper from Wild Heart onto Mistress. And we did that for only one reason. And that reason is, check out the way this Ramble Off-Road bumper looks, this W bumper. I think it's a very, 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 very sexy looking bumper. And it has everything you want. It's very, it's very compact. So I mean like the tire is like right here. There's not much room from the bumper from right here to where the tire is to be able to climb up obstacles and stuff. So it doesn't stick out much. It doesn't have anything that overhangs on the side. It holds two pod lights. And this bar right here, they sell different sizes. You can get this size or you can get the one that like sits up to here, which is pretty cool. 
and it's modular so you can take it off if you don't like to look for it. We did move over our Spindy Built winch from our heart onto this. It's a good winch. We've never had a problem with it. It has a wireless remote. It just works. <laughs> we added Dial Dynamics Amber Light Bar so that way we can see better in the dust and snow. This bumper doesn't have a way to mount the light bar to the bumper, but it very simply just screwed or drilled two holes on each side and mounted it right onto here and it's mounted to the bumper. It's a perfect little setup. Under the Revel bumper, we have the extra piece that they sell with it. This gives you extra protection. It covers all the um, automatic disconnect for the Rubicon. And as you guys saw on the Rubicon video, I ran into a very big rock with the bottom of this. So you definitely should have this if you uh, want to protect the stuff that is right here. On the inside of this, what you guys can't see is we have our cooler for our Redneck Ram for our steering box that we had to upgrade for our tires. Let's talk about the fun stuff now. Let's talk about the suspension. We did move over our suspension from Wild Heart onto Mistress, and the suspension that we chose is the Clayton Off-Road Overlander kit, the 3.5 inch kit. The kit has been perfect. It doesn't make any squeaks, any weird noises on the trail. It doesn't even get loose on us on having to check bolts on it. It has been a solid kit with a whole bunch of decent flex that we've just had incredible, really, really, really good luck with. We've had no problems with any of the joints or anything. So because of that, we moved it over to the diesel and it's been a really good kit for us. Uh, we are still running our gas springs from them since the diesel springs are on back order. We had no way of, of getting the correct diesel springs. So these are the gas springs. So it does sit a little bit lower in the front. But as you guys can see from the cover picture, the, the stance of the Gladiator is actually kind of perfect. When you load up all the gear in the back of the truck, it's, it's, it's just perfectly level. Along with the lift, we went with the Falcon 3.3 shocks. And let me tell you, having a way to turn the little dial to adjust your shocks on the fly, you know, just pull aside the side of the road and adjust them all to the way you want, it's amazing. We were in Death Valley and traveling, what, we were doing like 70 or so down the dirt road, and you could have an open can of soda, you could have a glass of wine in your hand, and it was perfectly smooth inside the truck. So if that's like, if that's your style of wheeling and you like to drive fast in the desert, but still like to have the performance and stuff, climbing on rocks and stuff like that, the 3.3s are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Tires. We actually switched back to Netto Trail Grappler 40 by 1350 17s on black rhino beadlock rims. These things, these are amazing on the trail. It's, they're so grippy compared to what the BF Goodrich tires were. So this is definitely our favorite tire of choice. And I mean, do you agree? Do you like these ones better? Those are my favorite tires. And, and the... I'm really happy with the beadlock rims because it gives us a chance to air down a lot more and have a lot more fun on the trails. Yeah. Because we were gonna run a 40 inch tire, we did not want to put a 40 inch tire on a factory axle. So we purchased axles from Curry Enterprise and the one we decided to go with because of the design was the F9 axle. They have more ground clearance than the Dana 60 axle and they're just as beefy and I think they look pretty sweet on the Gladiator. You'll damage something else before you damage the axles for sure. Yeah, the rest of the Jeep will fall apart before you damage the axles. The only downside of going with such a big axle is we went with the 70 inch width. When you're turning with the Gladiator so long, you definitely can feel the difference. But the positive side on it is with the Falcon shocks set to street mode when they're super tight and super hard, it drives like an indie truck down the highway. You can outperform like a BMW on the road. So it's pretty cool to have that kind of performance on road and then get off off road. And then you have the stability of having a little bit of wider stance. But the only downside is the turning. You just have to make one extra turn if you're climbing up an obstacle. We have not run into an issue with it being too wide on the trail yet. Rubicon is perfectly fine. If you guys are thinking about ordering axles for your Gladiator, uh, definitely reach out to Curry. They do have a pretty big backlog like everyone else. So we waited about eight weeks for our, our axles to be done. And um, I don't know if that's gotten shorter or longer or whatever, but um, do call over there. Do tell them Mr. and Mrs. Overlander sent you. They will totally take care of you guys. But I love them. I love, love, love them. They, they just look really slick on the truck. Next mod, <laughs> sticker. What? <laughs> just kidding. I know I was just filming, but I had to take a second and let you guys know that yes, we do have stickers. You guys have been asking us 
for stickers if we have them we're working on more merch that'll be coming out at some point soon whenever we figure that one out but <laughs> we do have stickers so if you guys see us on the trail and you follow us and Stay you down. subscribe hit us up we'll give you a sticker we don't really have them on hand thought i'd throw it out there <laughs> okay on to the bill video not sure the sticker counts as a mod but i'll put it up there in a jeep mod for, for what we did uh misses behind the camera did first blood on our rims right here first blood right, here. right there right here right here and right here as she was as she was passing a tree i'm like oh, there's a tree she's like yeah yeah i see it i see it and then <laughs> that happened crunch but the best part about beadlock rims is that little ring right there you can just replace it with any color you want or take it off sand it down put it back on the front of the jeep has the factory sway bar since we have the rubicon it's the automatic disconnect front sway bar the back of the Jeep, we went with Rock Jocks Anti Rock. We went with this for two reasons. First, we were told that it gives you better performance off road, like it's more stiff, like when you drive around the corners and stuff. And we have all this extra weight, so that was a positive thing for us. Second, on our other Gladiator, we ripped the sway bars off the frame, the, it broke all the bolts and everything. We didn't want that to happen to this one, so we went with Rock Jock, and that thing is solid well worth the money i wouldn't put it in the front but i definitely keep it in the back absolutely love it on the trail it's quiet it's amazing it's great 10 out of 10 recommend 10 out of 10 recommend and plus it looks cool <laughs> the back of the gladiator we have our rebel rack that we decided to go with and we went with this rack because it has the long mounts on the bed where it sits and our road armor rack just had a little tiny mount and what was happening was we would be driving down the highway with the with the tent and it was doing this and then it would take the bed and it was buckling the bed right here. It was all starting to bend a little bit. So that was a big no-no. And um, we didn't want that to happen to our new one. So we went with a better brand, a better rack. And this, this thing is solid. They say this thing can hold 2,000 pounds on top of it, which is, which is insane. We kept our rhino rack, that went on him. This guy wraps up all the way around the Gladiator. In our Overland build video, I'll show you guys what that looks like all open. It's very easy to open and very easy to close. We have our gas for the side. Now we've had this on our build since the very, very, very beginning. We've never actually used it for gas. We've actually never even put gas in it. So we've never been that far off trail to warrant filling it up with gas or diesel or whatever. So, so far it's just been a cosmetic thing. We did opt in for the lockable lock so that way it can't be taken off. If you guys decide to go with something like this on the side on the rack make sure you get the lockable locks because if you're someplace public people will rip it off your truck if it's not tied down locked down or whatever people will steal it and you know these things are 200 dollars, and that's a decent amount of money just to lose so again if you're gonna do storage things if there's a lock a locking option for it get the locking option for it it'll, it'll be well worth it that way it doesn't get ripped off and you wake up in the morning and your stuff is gone this is our little mini propane tank. This little guy serves for one purpose and one purpose only. We Inside, we have a hot tap, instant on hot water shower. So we'll plug that into this and with a, uh, a hose for getting water out of like a shower head. And then you have instant hot water. It's amazing, but we're gonna go over that in the other video too, since it's part of camp setup. We have this Rebel off-road bumper. It has like a wraparound design. It's actually two separate pieces. It has a wraparound design right here. What's nice about this bumper versus the one that we had in our other build, it has a step for you to put your foot in there and step up to get stuff out of the top of the truck or, or help close up a tent and stuff. And it's, it's flat instead of round. Yeah, and it's it has a flat stop so you can like walk around the Gladiator while getting stuff for like the tent or trying to fix something for the tent. So it's been very, very, very convenient having it like that. It still has the little loop things in the back. It still does use the factory trailer receiver right here. It still stays in the same spot. We moved over our deck system. I'll be going into more detail of this guy right here on our Overland camp setup video that we're gonna be working on. We kept our fridge slide, the same thing. This is, oh, it is on its tilt. So that way anyone can get anything out of it. It's very, 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 very convenient. It doesn't make any no noise on the trail. Locks in the place, super secure. And the best part about having the deck system and the fridge the way this is, 
when you're parked someplace and it's nighttime and you can't be with the gladiator or have eyes on it, there's no way to open up any of this stuff because they can't pull out because the tailgate blocks it and the tailgate blocks the deck system. So everything's nice and secure. The Revo Rack gives you the option to buy a table piece that mounts to it. So you have a fold up table that slides into its own design spot right above on the top here. This has been really convenient. This is a great add on. Really convenient to be able to take a full size table and slide it up here and it's out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. And it doesn't rattle or anything on the trailer. You can't even hear it, which is definitely a bonus. Two more things. Max tracks. Again, if you're gonna buy Max tracks, make sure you buy the pins that you can lock. I have four. And the only time we've ever used these Mack tracks is to level out the Gladiator for camping. We've never been stuck because it's a Gladiator, they just don't seem to get stuck so far. So we've never been stuck with it, so we've never had to use them as track boards. But we do use them all the time, almost nightly, for camping. Up here we have dial dynamic side lights. These are just filler lights for the side for, for nighttime. And then of course we have our iCamper SkyCamp 2.0 that we moved over. And our setup of the tent and all that good stuff, they'll all be part of the other video that we'll be working on after this video, for those of you that may be interested. So that's about it, you guys, for the build as of right now. There's a whole bunch of things I wanna show you, like how like our setup looks and stuff, but there's so much information on the next video that we need. I don't wanna cover it on this video for you, those of you guys who may not be interested in the rooftop tent and the uh, rack and all that stuff. But for everything we talked about on the video, I will be putting the link in the description below. None of this was sponsored. This is all pot. This is all paid for out of our own pockets. So I know a lot of you guys question some of the things we have in our truck, but everything you see here, we bought it with our own money. So for example, Curry Enterprise, we ordered axles direct from them. And since we do YouTube, we did ask them for a discount code for you guys. So if you're interested in ordering something like that, the link for the discount will be below or the information that you'll need to know before you call on them will be in the description below. The same goes with Rebel Off-Road their racks and bumpers and stuff like that. Um, I'll put all the information in the description below. But if you guys like this video, click on the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. We're not going anywhere. And we have a lot of cool content that we're gonna be working on with our diesel gladiator. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.